Daniel Robinson. What truly happened with Daniel Robinson? That's something we're going to ponder and cover in kind of the short update video that goes into some more exploration of what truly may have gone on with Mr. Daniel Robinson of Arizona. And this is going to be apparently the final video for a little bit here as certain things with the new platform really get settled in. So be sure to like this one, comment, as always leave your feedback, and spread this to the general public where it really needs to be debated now. We need to find out what truly happened with Daniel Robinson. Did he disappear one day into the horizon? Did he go into a cave, perhaps, as I'll go on? A little bit of a tour in the video for or could he indeed be in a place we haven't even thought of at this time yet that is a very important point and those will be explored these are key points here we are daniel robinson up next thank you so again <clears throat> this is going to be very important in regards to the daniel robinson uh, disappearance and the case overall as well the tragic disappearance of Carol Turner in the Oregon Pike Cactus National Monument. Um, this is a true story. And um, this has also appeared all the way along uh, quite often whenever looking up anything on Daniel, uh, Daniel Robinson in specific. This has consistently started showing up. So Carol Turner, Carol, uh, Turner, age 32, she drove to Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument in 1971. She was a postgraduate at the University of New Mexico and a very, very avid hiker who loved the outdoors. The visit to the monument surrounded by the Oregon Pipe Cactus was the last time she was ever seen in the area. There are many puzzling aspects to the case of Carol Turner. Search and rescue uh, teams have since reported these strange experiences. There have been many strange disappearances overall in Arizona, including the Paul Fugat, Morgan Heimer, GPS Joe, and Kay Welch. Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument and UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, located in southern Arizona, shares a border with the Mexican state of Sonora. The park is the only place in the U.S. where the organ pipe cactus grows. Along with the organ pipe, many other types of cacti and desert flora native to Yuma Desert also grow. In 1937, the land opened as a national monument in the area of Little Ajo Mountains of Pima, Arizona. The city of Ajo sits on the northeast of this small mountain range. The peaks in the Ajo Mountains include the isolated Black Mountain, which lies to the south of Ajo, and a peak elevation of 3,008 feet, as well as Cardigan Peak at 2,922 feet, which lies around the mountain mass west of Ajo Mountain. Carol stayed in the main visitor uh, veranda up to February 2nd and went walking in the Dripping Springs area where she spoke with a ranger and asked for hiking uh, ideas on either, on either the 1st or 2nd of February. She hiked to Bull Pasture in the Ajo Mountains and returned on the 3rd. The Bull Pasture Trailhead is described as intermediate and climbs upward to the rim but has no shade. The trail continues along the ridge for a while, with the best views of the entire monument from the north side. Before the area was a national monument, ranchers would always bring their cattle in the winter, which gave the area its official name. Once hikers reach the Bull Pasture, they either continue to Mount Ajo, a long, difficult day hike, or they make their way back via the same route on Estes Canyon Trail. The next day, February 3rd, a park ranger stated he saw Carol's car in the Bull Pasture Trail lot with a note. 
it said something to the effect that uh, if the car was here on the 4th, park ranger should be contacted. Only her boots and canteen were missing from the car. And so what's interesting about this is, in Daniel Robinson's case, they also found kind of a pair of shoes or a pair of boots that were left behind. And that really points to some interesting things. It, it makes me wonder, you know, whether or not Daniel Robinson may have gone uh, up into the cave and actually visited the Ajo Ajo Mountains that run parallel to Estes Canyon. The search was the largest they had ever had in the monument history. There were 134 people who worked 3,600 hours on this whole entire trek and expedition. Aircraft and specialist rock climbers were used to check the difficult terrain in the southern part of the Ajo Mountains. They still didn't find anything new. Eight to ten days after Carol had vanished, a park ranger caught an odor that he recognized from past experiences, which he believed was a dead corpse. On, the mon on Monday, the February uh, 15th, Supervisor range Ranger Hal Koss and others in the team confirmed the distinct human corpse odor being strong in this area. The following day, Ranger Koss, after flying the area in a border patrol plane, led an eight-man search team back over the whole veranda. They observed the odor in the same location, but this time it was occasional. Others in his group described this strange area as very bizarre, even scary. And Pima County author David Pilates, Missing 411 fame, reads this on his Canem Missing channel on YouTube. According to Rob Broyles, what may have happened is she wandered away from the basin of bull pasture and injured herself, and then perhaps slipped and fell off the cliff and was killed. February 3rd was very cold after all. Maybe she crawled into one of the hundreds of tiny caves that lined the cliffs. Dense brush had grown right up against the cave entrance, lining every single part of the area. And there, maybe, Carol Turner met her demise. It is nearly 50 years now since Carol Turner vanished. Although her mother felt this may have been a, that she was abducted during her visit, there was never evidence to support it. What she snatched as her family thought, and if so, who or what would have snatched her or abducted her then? What caused the odors of decay in the bull pasture area? Given the indications of a dead body, why couldn't the cat cadaver dogs find anything else? As Chief Ranger Broyle stated, maybe her remains are to be found in a cave upwards in a, a different part of this uh, mountain region. So it's very interesting. And of course, they've never found anything really concrete <clears throat> that links back to Turner since that time. But when you go here and you check, you know, check out the whole area, check out Ajo Mountains, uh, it looks like, you know, a very uh, suspicious area. It's got all these boulders. There's a sign here that says, do not ever enter when flooded. Well, what do they know that we don't? That they're making all these warnings about, you know, to not uh, not ever enter this uh, specific area. You know? And these are actually ex excellent uh, questions that we need to get to the bottom of. So thank you. Thank you again. All right, so this is what has been discovered um, and will be in the video you know, for public distribution for sure. This was another missing person case that happened just before Daniel Robinson disappeared. It states, human remains were discovered last week at a canal pump station in Mesa, Arizona. 
and were identified as Najib Jubi Monsif, a man on the autistic spectrum who vanished from Scottsdale, Arizona home in September. The Scottsdale police made the announcement on uh, Juby's official 21st birthday. Juby's birthday is the 22nd of December, the Post read. This day was always the happiest day of the year for the Monsif family these past 20 years. But something went terribly wrong. At a press conference held in Scottsdale, they stated they found what was identified later as human remains near the pump station on Loop 202 at Red Mountain Freeway. The crime lab confirmed that the badly decomposed remains belonged to 20-year-old Juby Monsif. We are heartbroken at the development of this case. It is not the outcome anyone in our community was hoping for. We all hope Juby will be found alive and in good health. Juby was seen in the early morning hours of September 23rd at his father's house in Scottsdale. When he decided to briefly come down from his room, his family told Dateline. When they discovered Juby was gone, they reported him missing. He did not take anything, not even an actual cell phone this time. Juby's sister told Dateline that he was verbal and communicated, but they couldn't figure out what had happened, and it seemed to be very strange during the time that he disappears. The length of the extension from where Juby's remains were found is approximately 11 miles. Heinzelman stated one possible theory is Juby made his way through a gap of two fence gates and then to the canal. The night prior to Juby's disappearance, police said statements were heard like, I will be missing you, but didn't elaborate or give details about what it means. For nearly three whole months, family, friends, the community, and everyone had knocked on doors, searched houses, brought out the cabinet dogs, and gone through the neighborhood of the vast desert wilderness to see if Juby would show up. Scottsdale Police partnered with Maricopa County and Central Arizona Project to, con to conduct these searches. The searches utilized everything, including bicycle units and mounted patrol, to see what they might pick up. I braced myself for the day I would have to say this, but the time has come. Thank you for standing with us in this journey. So, this is interesting, of course, folks, because if we go to uh, this area here, it's basically called Red Mountain Road, or Red Mountain Freeway, you know, like... Basically, it's where they describe it is uh, supposed to be at. There's really nothing out here. Um, and it's unusual because you'd expect there to be civilization of some kind. There's something out here. But what we see is a vacant lot. And we see what looks like a strange looking farm is what's out here. And so I found this very interesting because this is not that far uh, from the site where that cave is found in the area of the actual mountain range. So this is quite strange. They have self-storage out here and they have two vacant lots and there's an awful lot of green tall grass. Now, um, I don't believe necessarily here, there's what's called the Lehman Academy right here as well. So I don't believe necessarily here that this is where Daniel Robinson, as far as his remains, uh, would be. No. You know, Daniel Robinson may still be out, out there for sure. Um. However, this area kept coming up very strong on the map. So what I've been suggesting and uh, looking into as well is Daniel Robinson most likely stopped in this area, of this address. This is a strange kind of area and there's a pump station called the, and there's a, a station here that's by the pump station. 
called the Evo something school. So, you know, I just feel like this is one of the key places that Daniel Robinson definitely headed to, apparently. Probably while he was being chased. We then see, of course, the trucks that have been discussed in earlier videos. Those are seen, ironically enough, in the distance, in the uh, area of the farm, for some reason. Some mysterious trucks. So if he was being chased, and I believe it's been proven now that he was definitely being um, chased at least, it would make sense that he came through this specific area here. And perhaps that has something to do with why certain human remains have been found. Because Juby, Mon Juby Monsif is his name. His human remains were found right here at this pump station. Off of, see, the free, or whatever you want to call that, the Red Mountain. Uh, the official Red Mountain Highway, and so forth. You know, Red Mountain Freeway. And, uh... It makes me question certain things, and I wonder, you know, just just what was, what was Daniel Robinson really into? Because now, based upon the evidence that I've seen, and the fact that this report has come up the way that it has, you know, come up, um, it tells me that the same people who killed Juby and these other victims attempted to uh, kill Daniel Robinson. They were after him, for sure. So he came through this area, which is uh, definitely uh, unusual. I mean, this is not the typical area that you would... Uh, want to be going through that's for sure apparently it's a fairly rough area because i mean all that's out here is literally farmland and so it's unknown what kind of people really own these uh farm properties but it's ridiculously close to the canal and so the canal is what i wanted to discuss for a few minutes here as well the canal is an important uh, issue in this case, for certain, for some reason. And because if we look at, at the uh, some of the photos of the canal, you can see it here in the distance, if you were to zoom in on this, basically the Ajo Mountains are right here. They're not really that far away from this place where uh, Nassif's you know, Juby Mansif's remains were found. And that's concerning because that tells me we are getting closer to the area now where the actual kidnappers lived at, is what I'm saying here. We're getting closer to the area where the actual kidnappers lived at who were after Daniel Robinson. And one of the suspects that's been mentioned in a prior video, uh, he was also known to uh, frequent this area and travel through here. So this area needs to be thoroughly explored. I mean, I can't really do it here right now, but there are some very serious questions that need to be explored and addressed about this area. <clears throat> Especially the fact that it's right here by a canal and it's near the pump station and two to three gas stations. And one of the stations that was the prominent gas station on this specific road of the mountain freeway is where the remains of the other uh, person were found. This is, this is where 
you know, Juby's original remains were found. So the people who have been after these victims and who I sincerely believe are who attempted to take out Daniel Robinson. Um, they lived right here in this specific spot, in this area. I can tell you that right now. They lived out here in this specific spot. And the fact that you see the unusual trucks in the farm and everything here, and the fact that that news article kept popping up, many times it's no coincidence. They were definitely out here in this specific spot. And I wish that um, right now I could get into the area that uh, Daniel Robinson went through and likely escaped to after coming through here. But I won't be able to get into that right now. I just know that the Agio, you know, the Agio Mountains are oddly enough right here in the back. The farmland is largely uninhabited, which means potentially very dangerous people probably lived here and resided on some of these farmlands. And also the canal. And the canal is what I wanted to get to for a moment here. Thank you. Okay, this is what I wanted to set up here as kind of the conclusion for this video. To sign off, to sign off on here. This is very important. This is what's called Indian Bend Road. Which is right directly by the canal. So this is kind of... If you were to look at the, the previous time we were on this map, this is kind of the area that's right in back of where those farms are. And now we are on the other side, on the other side of the highway, over here. So this canal stretches for 11 miles, 11 miles. And the victim known as Juby, you know, Mansif, um, he was running through this canal here, right here where I'm standing and showing you, you folks, right here. It's very, very important to recognize this. And that means that his attackers, the people that were after Juby, who were definitely the ones who killed Juby, I would say, for sure, came from this specific area right here. And they were residing in this area. Right along the canal. And this canal goes on for several miles in both directions. But there is absolutely nothing that is really on the sides of the canal. There is only a trail that goes directly through the canal. In essence. And so what I started to uh, formulate in my official updated theory of events is that Daniel Robinson was definitely running through this area of the canal you know trying to get away from the uh, kidnappers the same exact kidnappers who killed uh, Juby. So he was here. That's what I'm going to officially tell you, you guys, right now. He was here. He was over here near the Red Freedom, you know, highway. And he was here. He was definitely over here, right directly by the canal. And he probably passed directly through the area of the canal. And, of course, the pump station that's on the other side of the canal. And so that's huge. That's a big piece of evidence to be able to go off of. Now, uh, he, he definitely got away. I mean, I get the sense that he came through this area and he got away from these very, very 
bad people. I mean, they, they, these are kidnappers. These are the same ones that killed uh, Juby. So he got away from them, but he definitely came through this area. That's confirmed. And then what would have occurred after that? That becomes the real question. Did he get then into kind of the mountain range area? Did he start seeking out a potential cave and similar things over here near the mountain range area? Well, whatever the case of what happened next, it definitely happened after Daniel Robinson officially passed through this area. There's a reason why it kept on bringing up the canal and also, uh, you know, Indian Bend Road, which follows directly next to the canal. That's how you traverse the area of the canal without walking through very, very hazardous deposits and uh, basically the soft bed of the river and similar things that are down below. And the reason for that is um, definitely because Daniel Robinson was here, for sure. But as to how long he stayed here, that's the real question. I'm going to presume that he came through this area very uh, quickly, and he was not here for very long, is the best description that I can give for what I've run into um, related to this. He most likely came into this area knowing that he had to uh, get away from these people. And um, he, uh, he somehow escaped. But the question is, you know, what, what direction did he really go? There's not a whole lot out here. But this is a perfect area that really needs to be heavily, heavily investigated. Because if you're going to find the killers, the, the murderers of... Um, Juby and other victims. You need to start definitely. This would be the number one place you would want to start. Here near the canal. Where all of these trucks. Unidentified trucks. And construction trucks have been found. Where some of these true green trucks have passed through. This area has not been touched. It's never been combed through. Almost nobody even knows uh, about this incident, to be exact. And this canal is very, very wide and very large. It goes all the way down this area of Scottsdale. So that means, folks, it's not really that far, even from um, Sun Valley Parkway. If you were to look at it on a full over overhead map and um, that sadly means that he was likely running away and he came through the area where the canal was but he was he wasn't in good shape because he had been running probably for a while and therefore you know there's a lot that can be said about that. He most likely had to have passed through the area very quickly. So, it's likely he, he wouldn't have even remembered these different landmarks. In any case, this area of the canal deserves to be deeply explored. And... Uh, 
hopefully, uh, you know, they finally get the investigators into the canal area. Because as you can see, if you look very closely at some of the houses and units and things like that across the way of where the gate is that you pass through into the canal, that's where a lot of these shady people live, is in these kind of housing units. And that's, I guarantee, because it's also on the other side of the farm, that's where some of the kidnappers lived. They lived directly in this area, and they probably did murder Juby, and probably did murder a number of other victims. In fact, I'm going to assume that they most likely did do that, because they're the kind of people that live out here near where this canal is, you're pretty much right over the target at that point. These are really uh, the exact opposite uh, types of people you would ever want to run into. So somebody better really be investigating. And I'm sure somebody will have at least heard of this area. Anyway, I appreciate it. I appreciate, you know, you guys coming with me on this journey, seeing the unmarked cars and the construction trucks. And please go ahead and get this out there. Let's get Daniel Robinson's story out there far and wide, especially with this very, very important update as well. And the mountains are directly near the canal as well, which explains some things. So thank you again. Continue to spread the word. Your help is what solves crime.